Hi, today I'm going to talk about HEC reference sheet. Uh, let's write down some notes. So the HEC reference sheet has four pages and containing um, advanced course and extension one, extension two. So I'm going to separate them into four separate parts. So this is part one. So let's start. Firstly, I'm going to color them in differently with the advanced extension one and extension two. So advanced, I'm going to color in red and advanced red and extension one yellow. And the last one, extension two, blue. Okay, so it's easy for student uh, knows which course and it will formulate it. Okay. So let's start. First is a measurement. So this measurement is talking about the uh, length and the area of a sector. So I'm going to draw the sector here to, to label where is the L. L is the arc length, arc length L. And uh, the R is the radius. So this is the R. And this is the arc length, and this is a the theta. So for both area and the length, the theta here, very importantly, you need to know the theta is in degrees. Because uh, if theta is in radius, we'll have different formulas. Don't get confused. So for these four, two formulas, theta has to be in degrees. Okay, let's move on. So the next one is the area of trapezium. So I'm going to draw the trapezium and uh, to let you know where is A, where is B, and where is H. So the A is uh, the two parallel side. So I'm going to write down, this is A, this is B. And the, the H is the perpendicular height. So that's H. And then you can use A and H and B to find in the area of trapezium. Right, okay, next one is the um, surface area. So these two surface area, one is the surface area of the cylinder. And the one is the surface area of the sphere. And the next one, volume. Volume is, um, the first one is the volume for any prism. So say for example, if this is the volume of um, triangle prism, I'm going to draw that the prism. Like for example, if it's triangular prism. Okay, so then the H is this one, the H. And what is the A? A is actually the area of the base. I'm going to just um, highlight it. So this is the A, the area of the base. And then you're using the area of base and height to find the volume of any prism. And next formula is the volume of sphere. So the whole section is the measurement and the whole section is for advanced students. So I'm going to highlight in red. Let's move on, next one. Next one is a function. And this function, the first part here is uh, for advanced students, I'm highlighting in red. And the first formula is for the solution of the quadratic equations, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, with the a is not zero for quadratic equations and the formula for you to find the two solutions or sometimes one solution, sometimes no solutions using that formula. And the next part here is actually is the polynomial equation. So the polynomial equation is for extension one student. So I'm going to highlight this one in, or in yellows. So yellow is extension one student.
Okay. So um, so what's this formula for? This formula is for if you have this polynomial equations and it has roots. alpha, beta, gamma. And then we can find the relation between the alpha, beta, gamma and the coefficients a, b, c, d. So this is the relation between roots and the coefficient for extension one student. And the last one, last one we back to, uh, this is relations. This is also for advanced student, the relations. The formula list in here, it was the equation of circle and uh, the center here, this is equation of circle. So they tell you the center here is k, h and k, and the radius is equal to r. So that's the equation of circle. And let's move on. Next one is the financial mass. And the financial mass is for advanced students. Again, I highlight in red. Okay, so this is a formula for compound interest. And uh, um, the A is for accumulated amount, and the P is principal, R is interest rate, and N is how many times compound. So the N sometimes be tricky. It's de uh, determined by how it compound. Say for example, we have R interest rate is 12% per annum. And then we put it in the bank for, let's say, two years. Okay. So if we compound yearly, and then your N just equal to two, because two years. But if we compound monthly, and then the N supposed to be equals to each month, each year there's 12 months. So two years, there will be 24 months. So N actually equal 24. And also don't forget, this time your R become 1% because we do per month, per month. Okay, let's move on. Next one is sequence and the series. This is also for advanced. So I'm highlighting in red. Okay, first two formula is for AP. And uh, the other three is for the GP. So for both formula, the A representing first term and uh, the L is the last term. So the D is only for AP. The D is equals to term two minus term one or term three minus term two is common difference between the terms. And for GP, the R is a common ratio. So it's term two over term one or term three over term two and etc. So that's for GP. And the, the GP has one more extra formula. It's called the limiting sum. But limiting sum has um, conditions. The condition is the common ratio has to be um, less than one. So they write absolute value of R less than one, or sometimes you can also write in the common ratio is even between one and the negative one. Then you will have limiting sum. And the formula is actually finding the limiting sum A over one minus R. Okay, let's move on. Next one, log and exponential. This is for advanced students. I'm going to highlight in red again. So first page, most of them is for advanced student. So first one is the log law. So I'm going to write a little bit more notes on these log laws. Uh, the first one is actually containing two different log law and get this result. Okay, so first log law is if you have log base A with b to the power of n, and the n can bring the front to become n times log base a b. So that's the first one. Second one is if you have log base a a, then that equal to 1. So combine them together, then we have the first formula. And the second one, second one is x equal to a to the power of log base a x. 
So this is very important. We change that x into an indices form with base a. But I think even more important, we lots of time we change that base e. So I write this there. So it's also equal to e to the power of log base e, which is ln x. So this is more useful in the end. Second formula is the formula called the change base formula. So we change log base A into log base B. Again, uh, very useful is we change log base E. So I write this down for ln x over ln A. And the last formula is um, also very important is we change the indices with base A to the indices with base E. Uh, lots of time when we do differentiate and integration with different bases, and then we have to change it because the formula for differential integration for exponential functions only for base E. So if it's other base, we change it. How do we change it? We're using this formula to change it. So it's, uh, this formula is from a to the power of x. We're using the first formula, changing to e to the power of log base e of ax. That's the first change. And then we're using log law, and the power can move in front of the log, so become x ln a. So that's how we get this formula. All right, so this is the part one.